it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. It's the Contagious Optimism Show with inspiring host Sonny Shays. Featuring best-selling author David Mezzafel. Real people with real stories of perseverance and hope. Join Sonny and guests ranging from Contagious Optimism co-authors to world leaders as they find the silver lining. Better understand why optimism is so empowering. Be recharged, inspired, and perhaps surprised as they tap into the secrets of a joyful life. To celebrate the human spirit. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific on UBN Radio. And Fridays at 3 p.m. Pacific on Gwen Network TV Stories. (laughs) Contagious Optimism. Hi, guys. I'm Sunny Chase, and we have applause, and then we don't, and then we will again for sure. I'm just going to tell you that we have two rocking guests today. I am so excited. You know, sometimes I'm excited, and sometimes I'm very excited, and sometimes I'm just flat out psyched. So today is one of those days. I have David Mezapel on the show with me flying in from Florida, fresh off the uh, plane and live in the studio, which I'm really excited about. And we're going to be talking about the event that's coming up on Saturday. We're going to be talking about how and why and where and who and all of that about contagious optimism, why to be contagious, I mean, why to be optimistic and all of the yummy, juicy bits about that, his new book, his old book, and not old book, his other book. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and we're going to be also having B.J. Gallagher here, who is, a, she, I've just got like a table of her books, and I could fill the whole table with her books. She's an inspiration to so many people, and it's just perfect that I have the two of you. But we're going to be chatting with David first to kind of get into what's going on with David, because you flew all the way in here from Florida, and we're going to yes, chat. So, yes. hi, David. Hey there. Let us have applause. Yeah. We must have it. Thank you. Thank you. Woo-hoo! I want to thank my family. I want to thank Sonny. I want to thank DJ. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yahoo! Terrific. So, David, you're here. I love it that we just have applause and then it just goes out. I feel like I have to like, woohoo! A very trained audience. Very, <laughs> very trained. Very good. Thank you, audience. They know so when trained. to shut up. Right. So, um, and we know when to speak, which will be now. <laughs> <laughs> And when to laugh, which will be now, too. So, David, let's talk about so many things. The first thing I want to talk about with you is um, thank you for being here, flying sure. in and being live. You know, I always like it that way. Skyping just is not the same. No, this is great. And I appreciate being here. I love I love being on the show. It's thank great. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. So let's talk first about um, actually... We had some guests on the show a couple weeks ago, um, Ali uh, Stroker, who uh, it was uh, in the Glee Project and also on Glee, who um, beautiful, beautiful young girl who uh, is in a wheelchair. She was in a wheelchair from the time she was two on, mm-hmm. and uh, they actually wrote a part for her on Glee. It's an amazing part. And um, so on that show, we talked about you, and so I'm on this show, I'm talking about her, but I want to talk about you because I, at that very time, you were doing something with wheelchairs yourself. That's so right. So let's share about that. That's right, sure. Well, uh, Miss Wheelchair USA is a uh, state and national event, and basically, mm-hmm. it, it was an amazing experience. It was actually a highlight for me, both personally and professionally. I was their keynote speaker for 2014 Aww. in Ohio, where they have their national pageant. And the way it works is all these women uh, all over the country that are permanently disabled, they compete on the state level. And then they go on, the ones that win go on to the national pageant. And it was, talk about a lesson in perseverance. It was just it was I mean, something I'll never they, forget. Do they do all the, you know, like, do they sing? I mean, do they have all the sort of things we're used to in pageants as far yes, as, like, uh, answering political questions and all those kind of things? Yeah, very similar to Miss America. They all compete on their platforms, whether it be children's literacy, cancer research, um, you know, f- poverty, whatever it may be. They compete on different cool. platforms that they support. Mm. Uh, they also compete in different outfits. Uh, they each give a lecture. It's you sit there and you just can't believe it, it makes you you'll never complain again when you when you walk out of that mm. auditorium. So that was mm. my experience. And it was something that I just will never escape me. I think about it every day. <sighs> well, when we're talking about contagious optimism, we're talking about optimism, we're talking about po- the human possibility. Um, there's so much talk 
in every aspect of our lives it feels like these days about gratitude right. and what that does and how it's healing and how it just you know it's just where it's at as we used to say and um again i'm sure for you when you were sitting there watching that and i felt that way so much when ali was here um and i was also here with a woman uh, laura sharp uh, who had fallen out of a helicopter and started an organization called artists for trauma i just said i feel so humbled I, I just feel so humbled being here right now because I just do. I mean, there's you two are so beautiful. You are so alive. You're so vital. You're rocking it. You're doing new things all the time. And so, you know, when you're so you must have felt something like that. I did. I did. As a matter of fact, uh, these women, you really learn one thing from them that being handicapped, disabled or anything else is irrelevant in pursuit of your dreams. They prove that. They pr just hearing them being so selfless as they are um, and just focused on optimism, focused on perseverance. It was very eye opening and, and wonderful to see. And it, it goes to show that effort, reality and positive thinking works for everyone, no matter what your, your status is in life. Well, yeah. And when I was uh, talking with these two, I was thinking, well, you know, people have their inner trauma. You know, they have their inner challenge. It may not be being in a wheelchair or right. something like that. And so, again, you know, just kind of how to work through that. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. I actually have some brain facts for you later nice. when, when we bring BJ on. But um, so uh, I want to do a little teaser for our people. So I want to also talk about kind of the reason you're out here is for Contagious Optimism Live. Right. Woohoo! Yes. Um, so this is a great event that's going to be mm -hmm. happening this Saturday. Yes, it is. It's um, Saturday, October 11th. It's, uh, like you said, Contagious Optimism Live. And what we basically do, we take our book and we, we put it on stage in a TED-like experience where um, we have short talks combined with entertainment and music. It's a lot of fun. It starts at 2 o'clock. And then that ends at seven, and then we go into an after party with dinner and fun and dancing. And you are the after party boy, I will say. This guy knows how to have fun. I mean, you know, this is this is not just some book he wrote, and he he is the real deal. And actually, I want to um, say that again. I, I know I've said that before, David, but again, in my life, you know, I work with so many people. Uh, I get so many books and CDs and things, having the privilege I do in this business. And um, and not everybody walks a talk. I'll just put it that way. Really, mm -hmm. not everybody does. And in well, my thank you. my wise uh, older years, I've been kind of through it all. And it's just a really a pleasure to support you and work with you and everything because you really do walk the talk. Oh well, thank you. I, I say the same about you, and I, I really do appreciate that. <laughs> I really, I think it's important. You. I think it's important if you're going to, um, you know, practice what you preach. Yeah, the cliche. But it's so true. Yeah, it's well, so I mean, true. I've kind of gotten to the point also where I'm sort of like, you know what, just give me some guy or gal or whoever who's just down to earth and just lives their life in a great way as opposed to somebody who's read all the books and and uh, used all the, listened to all the songs and maybe sung all the songs but isn't really living it. I mean, you know what I mean? Exactly. So exactly. that's kind of you, but you're all of it. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I'm glad you brought that up, too, because there's a gentleman – um, who's in our book, who will be speaking on Saturday, named Tim Harris. Oh. And, uh, and I bring him up because he's exactly what you just described as well. Oh. And uh, Tim was born with uh, Down syndrome. And basically, uh, he never let that stop him in pursuit of his dreams. And one of his dreams since childhood was to own a restaurant. Oh, wow. And I'm happy to say that he is the first person in this country, and I believe in the world, with Down syndrome, to own a restaurant and it's called Tim's place. And, uh, their slogan is now serving breakfast, lunch, and hugs. And you have I to have a hug when you walk in the door. That. You know, I think I saw, wasn't he on something like not 60 minutes, but wasn't, I, I think he's I been saw on several him. shows and, and he's uh, a crack up and it's a really cool restaurant and all the people are there. Yeah, and it's Albuquerque, really good food. New yes. Yeah. Yes. He's just on, uh, oh he was just at gosh. the white house for a dinner. And oh, Obama uh, was speaking at the podium, <laughs> and Tim <laughs> got up and went and hugged Obama on national television. <laughs> Is, I love but, but the reason I, I bring him up because you talk about genuine people, he has the most unbelievable faith in mankind. Oh. And, and what I mean by that is he literally has one requirement to be in his circle you have to be a human being. Oh my That's God. It. If you're a human being, you get a hug, and he tells you he loves you, and oh. he means it. And it is Whoa. it is so refreshing to be around this guy, mm, mm. and uh, and what you just described 
I think of him, genuine, real, and no judgment, no nothing. Just and it's not thing. about the books and bells and whistles, not and, at all, you know, and all that stuff. It's just, no. it's just real people. By the way, I don't know if we mentioned where this is going to be. It's going to be in Thousand Oaks at the yes. Thousand Oaks Performing Thank Arts you. Center from two to seven. And you know, people can buy tickets. Uh, and if you're, you know, we're all kind of busy people. If you can't be there for the whole thing, people could perhaps come for part or no. Yes, absolutely. And the tickets now are, are seventy nine dollars, but we, we're discounting them. To fifty, if they enter the promo code Ricky for Ricky Powell, he's one of our speakers. Aww. And uh, so, we're, if you put in Ricky in the um, where you purchase the ticket or at the box office, you'll you'll save thirty dollars, and that includes the dinner, drinks, after party, the whole. Well, thing. that's yeah. worth it's that right there. <laughs> yeah. So, if people want to come late, it's still a great value. So. I know there's going to be some great music. I know Faith Rivera is going to be there. Harold Payne's going to be there. The Tweedly Divas are going to be doing yep. something. Janice Stanfield, Jan- exactly. Lynn Rose, yeah, yeah, a lot of musicians. Great music. Musicians, a uh, very, very high caliber musicians. So um, I want a little teaser from you. And then, guys, I want to remind you that I'm Sunny Chase. You are listening to and watching Contagious Optimism. And we have David Mezapel with us. And soon we will have BJ Gallagher. She's uh, in the wings here. She's going to be yep. flying in in a short bit. Uh, <laughs> but I want to do a little teaser while we're on the subject of the Contagious Optimism live event. Uh, is there any story or person or something? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Okay. But, uh, you know, I do that. <laughs> I, like I to love keep, it. I like to Keeps keep the blood it real. <laughs> yeah. I right. see you getting blood already. No, no, so, no, yeah, no, don't fine. be afraid. I'll no, ask I sunburned from Florida. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. thought it was from LA or LA beaches. It's yeah. been like 142 oh, God, degrees here. It's crazy. I have Saudi Arabians staying with me, and they will not shut up complaining. I'm like, seriously, people? You know, but anyway. Oh, um, <laughs> it's like 132 oh, where you live. so but funny. They just can't handle it here. Um, so we... I want a teaser. I want a little, can you give our audience a little treat, um, maybe some sort of nugget or story or something that, that you might want to share with us just that comes sure, to your mind, sure, pops sure. in and pops out? Well, <laughs> one thing we have is um, we originally, there was a father and two daughters that were going to perform on the show. Oh. And they've been on Ellen and America's Got Talent, these cute little girls that sing, and their father records them every day, and they're one of these YouTube sensations. Uh, but last minute, because of a personal issue, they can't they can't make it. Oh. Uh, so we are actually going to make shift with adults, two little children and an adult that will be on stage and perform their music just like they would. Oh, my God. And then we'll uh, actually play their videos. So oh, my them. God. How and fun it's, is it's that? It's really going to be funny. Oh, You're going to see an adult wow. with a little child's bow in her hair. Oh, it's going to be great. And that's just one little tiny sample. Oh, my God. Well, you know, one thing I do want to say about the Contagious Optimism book is that there are many different stories in here. I mean, the front says uplifting stories and motivational advice for positive forward thinking. Uh, And there's so much. uh, We'll be talking about this more with BJ, too. But there's so much actually scientific proof to back up, of course, what what a lot of positive people have been saying for, you know, just kind of what we say for our kids and that kind of thing. And. Of course, um, Indians have known a lot of things about blood circulation and all that 5,000 years ago or before um, Western medicine found these things out. So a lot of the information has been floating out there and, you know, we're kind of getting to catch it. And um, it's exciting to know how we can actually reprogram our brains all the time and how the positive aspects of uh, of of just kind of what we put in that sort of garbage in garbage out thing or really excellent in really excellent out let's put it that way um can can be happening and um so i also want to ask you one more question sure bring them on before thank you very much i appreciate you like you're fun to play with um (laughs) so you know i do this show i'll start with a fact and then i'll say i really do have a question in here (laughs) i i do this show because it's my dharma I feel, you know, I do this show because I want to myth bust. I want to educate. I want to bring you sages on as I'm the seeker to ask questions and to learn from you and to read your books, you know, before and and do all that. And so the reason I do it is because I want you guys to learn something new to to get your, you know, to crack something open a little bit. Some thought that you thought was for sure true, just you know, some negative thought that you might have thought about other people or some condition about yourself or the world you can find out is not necessarily true. So there are many reasons why I do this show and also Singing in the Rain. And so why are you doing Contagious Optimism Live? Because I know you're not like getting rich off it yet. No, definitely not. (laughs) But, you know, so why are you doing it? Well, whether it's the book or the live event or anything else, I, I love people's stories. 
And our mantra has been, and I think it always will be, that when people are going through tough times, they tend to think they're alone. But when they hear stories of how others have persevered, it gives them hope. And to me, hope is that foundation of optimism. Mm -hmm. And I believe so wholeheartedly in that, mm -hmm. that it's my drive behind everything I do. And, and the money we do make, we share with charities and nonprofits. So this, exactly. this is not a uh, money-making thing by any means. Uh, but I still believe in people's stories. And, and because so many people go through tough times, they need to hear these stories so they know they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the drive behind it. Mm -hmm. And in the live nice. event, you know, books, books are wonderful. I love, I love books. Um, but for what we're doing, we need to be a movement. And to be a movement, we need these other elements. We need these radio shows, the TV shows. We need the live events. We need the books. Um, anything we can to get the message out. And that's it. And that's, I hope I answered your question. But that's why I do it. That's why I do it. Well, and something that you just said reminded me of something. Um, one day I was talking to Marianne Williamson, um, the author and inspirational speaker and everything. Right. And... Um, and I said to her, you do these uh, Course in Miracles every week. And I said, well, it's just so cool you still do that. I mean, you're kind of famous and you know, you could do whatever. And she said, I do it every week because I need to remind myself, you know, I need to keep myself in shape. And I was thinking about when you were saying this and it's like the concept of positive anything, um, not only to know that we're not alone and that the truth is we are a community, we are all connected. But it's sort of like brushing our teeth. I mean, we need to reactivate it, or we don't need to do anything, but it's a gr damn great idea yes. <laughs> to reactivate it as much as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, I think of the Quran and the idea that people pray five times a day. They stop doing what they're doing, and they pray for like three minutes. But it's like, okay, that kind of reset button, that, r you know, reactivating of shh, calm, peace, knowing all is well in the world, even if it's for that three minutes. And then, of course, it does... You know, it does trickle out into our lives and then to exactly. other people we're around. Yeah, regardless of what your beliefs are, that the power of prayer is very important, no matter what it is you believe in. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, those few minutes mean a lot. I, a friend of mine, uh, I'm you know I was born Catholic. I was actually the church organist. You know, all these funny. You knew that because you teased me once about it. Oh my um, God, that's right. But, uh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I actually appreciate all religions and I try to understand all religions. Yeah. And um, and a friend of mine who's actually, she's Muslim, uh, she really opened my eyes back up to the power of prayer. I actually forgot how important prayer was because I've gotten so caught up in everything I do. And she brought me back to that point where, you know, you should try to pray every day, regardless of your religion. And I really do appreciate that. I really, it's, it's almost like meditation, but it's prayer combined with meditation. It's a wonderful thing and it really has ground me to not let all this get me stressed because the purpose of this is to not be stressed. So why am I stressed about doing it? And, indeed. Uh, indeed, right? So indeed. Uh, and um, I'm going to say one thing and then I want to bring on BJ. So I'm going to let John, our engineer, get prepared because, you know, this is a good, a good time to get right. prepared for that. Um, just speaking of that, I was going through some challenges in the last month and I was just like, oh, and I just felt kind of scattered. It was like my, I just wasn't, it's like, ooh, what's up with my brain and what's up with my mind and all of that. And I, and I just took out a pen and a paper, just, just you know, a legal pad. Right. And I just started writing down. Down everything I was grateful for and you know it sort of sounds corny and I know actually Oprah did that every morning and every night before she went to bed and you know so that was kind of floating around and I, I've done that before I have sort of a practice of doing that but sometimes when I'm the most wigged out is when I sort of the least want to do that and yet I just sat down I just said okay sit get a coffee and sit down and get out sharpen that pen and go for it girl and I wrote like three pages and nice. I just kept making myself sort of go deeper and deeper and deeper and it just totally shifted my energy and just and so I was a lot more focused so, and so way better than drugs up. I'm so glad you brought that up because a lot of times people will ask me you know how do you find or maintain optimism and I say there's four minimum steps um, that I think people need and I base this on the when we get all these stories, there are these common denominators. And from that, I got these four themes. And the first one is gratitude, what you just said. Mm -hmm. You need to be grateful for even the smallest things in your life. Oh, yeah. You know, instead of sweating the small enough, the small stuff, why not be psyched about the small stuff? Yeah. So that's the first thing is being, you know, it could be this glass of water. It could be a toothbrush. It could be the air you breathe or the sunrise. But you got to be grateful for the small stuff. And then the second thing is stories, like we just talked about, people's stories and the third is, I say the magnet. I think I mentioned this last time that 
um, optimism is a happiness magnet, which came from Mary Lou Retton, the Olympic gymnast. And the last is uh, altruism. Yes. You need to yes. give back, even if it's not money. It could be time, talent, or treasure, but you need to give back. It, it, it's part of that. It's part of being optimistic because you realize helping others is, is what we're about. As a matter of fact, in the Quran, there are five things that make a Muslim, and I won't go through all five of them, even though I know them. But one of them is a thing called, I think I'm saying it correctly, deka. I'm, it, my accent is horrible, but it is giving two and a half percent of your um, w uh, net worth to charities. It's nice. in the it's in the Quran. Um, and one uh, last thing I want to say, and uh, because you were talking about the glass of water, I was thinking of uh, one of our guests last year or uh, the beginning of the year at Contagious Optimism Live, Dr. Emil. Yes. Right. And uh, when you were talking about just the smallest thing, being uh, grateful for a glass of water, and I could go into um, a, an entire month of shows about being grateful for water because we do take this for granted. Although in California right now we're having droughts, so we are a little more conscious of it. But um, when I was talking about the glass half full, and then I looked at Dr. Emil, and I remembered that, and I said to him, you know, there was a time, I mean, you were a surgeon, a laser focused and had dexterity of a laser person to do amazing surgery and then you could not even hold a glass of water it would drop to the floor you didn't have the neurological aspects he of was your, electrocuted in your hand in surgery. to you yeah. know so the idea of the gratitude of being able to have this glass of water and to be able to hold it for him was a huge thing when i said that to him he got tears and so did i so with that very very interesting segue i mean i just don't even know we're just like the wackiest people here on contagious optimism today i want to bring on bj because i want you to add to our conversation is that okay with you Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking okay, forward to it. Let's bring on BJ. So I have a whole deal of uh, books here, but the one book that her publicist wants me to talk about, but I want to talk about all of them is, and we are talking about this one because I love this. It's never too late to be what you might have been. Come on, people. Come on. Don't forget about those dreams. You can always be hot and sexy, right? And um, I mean, until, well, we'll get more into that in a minute, but we have other books here that I want to talk about. Yes, Lives in the Land of No. I want to talk about that. I want to talk a peacock in the land of penguins. Being a Buddha at work, speaking of always being in prayer. 108 ancient truths on change, stress, money, and success. Oh, yeah. And then my personal favorite, Learning to Dance in the Rain, because, of course, my other show is Singing in the Rain, as some of you may know. So without further ado, as they used to say, let us bring on B.J. Gallagher. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> My people are here. <laughs> Your people are everywhere, I have the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. let us talk with BJ. I'm so excited that you're here. It's just so awesome. Is this perfect? Well, I'm excited to be here too. It just all fell into place, didn't it? It did. So um, let's, you know, I want to ask you a little bit about why you decided to write this book. It's never too late to be what you might have been. Come on, bring it, girl. The story about that is um, I was I was facing a big birthday, one of those birthdays with a zero on the end of it. <laughs> and one morning I was getting ready and I was putting on my makeup and a voice that I've heard before started whispering in my ear. It was the voice of my old companion, Hopelessness. Aww. And Hopelessness said, give it up, honey. Yeah. You got this big birthday coming up. You're mm. never going to find the man of your dreams. Right. And you know what? You're never going to be on Oprah either. And you know what else? You're never going to be wealthy. You're never. And he just went on and on and on about it ain't going to happen for you, sweetheart. So just give it up. Just give it up, babe. And I sort of went into this funk for a couple of days. And I'm generally a very optimistic person. And it, it just... I, listen, I made the mistake of listening to him. Yeah. And so for a couple of days, I was like, yeah, it's over. It's too late. Ain't never going to happen. New York Times, Oprah, money. No, ain't ever going to happen. And then I was re I forget what I was reading, but I came across this quote by George Eliot. And the quote is, it's never too late to be what you might have been. And it practically jumped off the page at me like, News flash, this is for you. Love it. And love it. I went, that's it. That's my new mantra for the rest of my life. From now on. So hopelessness, you can just take a powder, 
I listened to you for a couple of days. I'm done, toots. You know, hit the road, Jack. And, <laughs> and don't you come back. And right. don't you no come more, back. No more, no more, no more. And so then I was talking with my good friend, Brenda Knight. We have the same publisher. Yep. And I was telling her about this experience. She goes, that's a great title for a book. Would you write a book about that? And I, you don't have to ask me twice when it comes to writing books. I went, yes, ma'am, I will. And so I cranked out a book. And again, it's it's stories of uh, both famous people and unfamous people as well as some wonderful inspiring quotes that i think sort of add so it's not just bj saying this sure. or it's not just george Eliot saying it one of the things i love about quotes is it adds a a timelessness to the message yes and it adds a universality to the message so and a little again, cachet sometimes too oh yeah i'm, I'm <laughs> perfectly happy to hang out with george Eliot. Yes, yes and uh, and so that's or how, maya angelou or yeah, whoever that's, yes, and i good. often find that great quotes make great book titles yes I actually have a book at home that's called 2178 of the Best Things Ever Said. I love that book. I will lend it to you sometime because you will love that book. But it's so fun. It's like yeah, just, I mean, it, yeah, it goes all the way from Woody Allen to Shakespeare to Neil Simon to whoever. Well, one thing that I love about this, and yay, because I have been kind of feeling like this in my mind that it, it that well actually there have been many times when I feel like it, it has been over it's like mm -hmm. well I you know I turned 40 or whatever it's like whoa like I thought by this time I would have just fill in the blanks and maybe 10 of them mm -hmm. and it's who my and of course not looking at all the things I did do and also so there's so much to say about this because there's also I was talking to my son today and he was 24 and he was like oh my god and I thought I would be hot you know but <laughs> and I'm like you know what <sighs> we're also shifting the whole thing about what success means mm -hmm. so what is beauty you know that was something I talked to Laura Sharp about who you know fell out of the plane and had lost an eye and a foot and whatever and she talked about beauty and a wheelchair you know aspect right. of of you know the the, the idea of wheelchair beauty it would normally not be something we would put together in a sentence and you know what are the concepts of success beauty happiness community power all of that is so different i mean you you did that world also you still kind of do a bit I mean, right absolutely so it's is but don't you feel that way too that it, it gives us more opportunity to have what we might have not had or be exactly who we might right. not have been because it doesn't have to look the same way as it did 30 years ago. Not at all. Am I right or am I right? Well, you are. And, and I think we owe a lot of credit to that, to the baby boom generation. Mm -hmm. Because the baby boomers have redefined, I'm a sociologist by training, so I tend to step back and look at cohorts and demographics. Mm -hmm. But if you look at that baby boom generation, everything changed in the 60s. Mm -hmm. It's In fact, Yankelovich did a big study back in the 60s and published a book, and it was called what was it, searching for meaning in a world turned upside down, something like that. That basically in the 60s, the rule book about acting your age, about what <laughs> success means, about what family means, the rule book got tossed out the window, which was both the good news and the bad news. The, right. the bad news is we didn't have a recipe anymore. The good news is we get to make up our own. And so as that generation has moved through its ages, it has redefined, it redefined youth, it's redefined middle age, and now we're redefining aging. Yes, and I would say with the 60s, there was an undercurrent of a lot of change, and in the 70s and the 80s, there was still a lot of big business equal success. I mean, certainly, you know, the 80s and Wall Street and Drexel Burnham and all that, I mean, it was, it was a lot about, you know, how much money you had meant what your success was, what your worth was as a person. And honestly, I went through a lot of that. It was like what it said in my on my ledger in my bank account meant equals Sonny's value, which is sucked sometimes and sometimes was good. But, you know, <laughs> right. that's just not cool. Whereas for thousands of years, elders have been, you know, wisdom, uh, knowledge was what was valued, was was power and but in the good way was was mm -hmm. you know the good stuff so yeah so I feel like I have a little bit of that now <laughs> oh you do you <laughs> a little bit do. of that now yikes there but the good so the good news <laughs> is that we can still uh, measure our success by money if we want to right the good news is it's not the only yardstick anymore yeah. so it can be wisdom it can be beauty it can be artistic creation 
and community, absolutely. friends, absolutely. Yep. love. And so in, in my book, there's seven chapters about it's never too late. So, And one of them is it's never too late to gather wealth. That's that if it. you haven't been saving and you're, you're 59 years old, it's not too late. Right. You yeah. can learn new financial habits. If you're in your- And you can create new money. It's never too late to find true love. It's never too late to be athletic. It's never too late to express your creativity. So there's lots of ways to measure success. And that's what I tried to cover in the, in the book is looking at all the different ways that one can lead a happy, fulfilling, meaningful life and money is one of those. Yes, absolutely. And I don't mean to money's say that that's bad. not. Money's no, not money's bad. No, money's definitely not bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, absolutely. Um, what did you want to say to that, David? I felt uh, thoughts uh, no, coming No, I just, through. when you, you guys were talking <laughs> about wisdom, uh, one thing that I think you know is we go into senior living communities and capture yes. stories. Yes. And it's extremely rewarding. Uh, because we, we get stories from all ages and all demographics. Mm -hmm. but, but every so often we will speak at a senior community anywhere in the country, really. And um, but then at the end of the talk, we encourage people to share their stories and, and we will actually capture the ones that we really like and put them in a future book. Mm -hmm. And the wisdom for the, the greatest generation and the silent generation and these people is just it's unbelievable. It's astounding. It's really astounding. And, yeah. it, and it comes back to this. You have these experiences, whether they're good or bad, but they all chalk up to your wisdom. And you take that with you, and, and why not share it while you're still alive so you can help others? Yeah. And, yeah. and again, even the idea of an experience being good or bad, we're even moving from that. Because, I mean, again, talking to my son today, he was, so why didn't I start this earlier and this or that? And it's like, well, now you can really appreciate how all of that was a challenge. Right. And then when you're on the other side of it, you'll be so much more grateful. I mean, I think that that's a, one of the fun things that we're doing now is kind of reframing and re. <sighs> like be, being able to let go a bit of the judgment of, you know, kind of we did this or we did that. It's okay. We can just start from now. Exactly. You know, you're going to really appreciate this is really funny. Today. We'll be the judge of that. But yes. Go ahead. Well, I, I declare <laughs> that I think it's funny in my world. <laughs> um, someone sent me something. It was like a like their car got in an accident. And they put a sad face. And I decided, especially going into Contagious Optimism Live and everything else, no more sad faces. From now on, I call them upside down smiling faces. Okay, there you go. What do you think? I like it. Isn't that good? So, I like you, so it. if you try to send me a sad face, I'm not going to accept it. I'm I call love it, it upside down smile. Okay, I'm going to share some stuff with you that I learned because when I found out we, we were talking about the brain and we were talking about you know the science and stuff like that, and so I I've been researching. Uh, last month I actually had back to cool school month because the way that we're dealing with our youth right now, and again my son was like, ah, oh, can they just give us good food? And can they just teach us and not just throw stuff at us one way and expect us to catch it and run? He's a genius, and yet, you know, school was a challenge for him. So I've been researching and kind of playing with um, sages who've been on my show about reusing the brain and, and kind of reworking it and stuff. And so um, this is some information from Deepak, which I love. Uh, this is about the neocortex. Your brain is constantly renewing itself. Yay! Your brain can heal its wounds from the past. Again, yay. Experience changes the brain every day. So again, resetting that and re, you know, reading something positive and letting that come through. Uh, the input you give your brain causes it to form new pathways. Okay, people, at any age, any age. Um, and then I wrote yay here too. The more positive the input, the better your brain will function. The brain is a process that leads in the direction you point it in. And the agent that makes this possible is the mind. So, you know, this is how much control we have at any age and also with any um, outer or inner handicap. You know, so if somebody does have something going on physically that allows something to not work then other things can and you know there's just exactly. there's just there's just <clears throat> endless amount of possibility that's really great information isn't that cool yeah, it's terrific yeah I love it. so i want to know um so i want to know quickly from you bj uh about that idea of um yes about yes about well, i wrote yes. a whole book about yes yes, yes. and it lives the, in the land of no, no or lives in the land of no, no but i like lives, lives in the land of no yes, okay lives in the okay, land okay there of no. you go and, and and the basic message is that you have to go through a lot of no's 
to get to yes. Yeah. That you have to go into the the neighborhood. Uh-huh. If you go into any neighborhood and knock on doors, there's a lot of no's out there. No, I don't want to buy that. No, I'm not interested. No, yeah. you can't mow my lawn. No, 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 no. Yeah. And we all experience an enormous amount of rejection on the way to success, whatever our success looks like. Whether you're looking for true love, you're gonna have a lot of rejection. If you're looking for a job, you're gonna have a lot of rejection. If you're trying to publish a book, God knows you're gonna get a lot of rejection. A lot of no's. And so you have to go out and knock on those doors, but for every door that says no, you're one door closer to the one that says yes. I like that. But the biggest no is very often the one that lives in here. Yeah. And so part of what I like to to talk to people about is how do you overcome that? How do you take advantage of the neuroplasticity of the human mind? Because decades ago, they thought it was all over by the time you were five. That That's Freud right. was right and your brain was set. That's right. And now scientists are tell, talking about neuroplasticity, yes. that the brain can be reprogrammed. <laughs> yes. And so you you take those old grooves and ruts about well, this isn't going to work, and that isn't going to work, and it's too late. And you go, okay, thank you for sharing. And then you go and you start to carve some new, some new routines. Like that the... stuff I was just reading about, that, exactly. you can re- that you can actually do that. Exactly. I mean, I think that that is what is, like, I hope you guys got that, and you can press the pause and replay and all that and write that down, because or just Google Deepak Chopra and find it. Also, Gene Houston is doing a lot of work on that right now as far as, you know, the neocortex and all also, I love this one. Get ready for this. There are enzymes that are secreted when we're babies that tell us, do a lot of stuff fast, like learn to walk and talk and move this arm and move, move these fingers. And like just tons of enzymes are pouring through and hormones that are saying, get it, get it, get it, because it's a survival thing. You know, if you, if you don't learn how to walk and talk and crawl and, you know, all that stuff fast, you get eaten by a lion. So you got to get it fast. So all of this is surging through us. And then as we move through, again, our mind, like Deepak was saying, at a certain point, at some point, it can be 10, it can be 89, it could be 104, tell, the mind tells the brain, it's okay, we got it, we're done now. And those enzymes and hormones, I won't get into all the technos, but um, start slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And so that is really what the aging process is about, people. So it's really about if we if we are saying yes, if we are learning a new language, if we are learning how to dance, if we are challenging ourselves, then we are and we have the desire to be vital and to keep rocking it and you know doing it, and we can continue being sexy and juicy and lovely and fabulous and and fun and whatever. Then those enzymes continue until we die. They do not slow down until our mind mm-hmm. says we're done. Isn't that fascinating? Oh, that's great. It is great. It is. And I think a big part of that is being curious. My mother yeah. my mother is 86. And one of the things I've always loved about her is her curiosity and her willingness to ask questions. She's not afraid of appearing dumb. She doesn't have a college degree. She was a housewife. She didn't work for a living outside the home. She I have a question for you about your mom. And she would also, she would always, ask, I'd be talking about something. She goes, what does that word mean? Or, you know, why are you doing that? And she'd always have these, and I, and I so, I grew to admire when I was younger, it used to annoy me like, oh mom, you know, why don't you know that already? And as I've gotten older, I've really grown to appreciate that her curiosity and being willing to say, I don't know, what does oh, that's that a mean? Big one too. Tell me that, that, that she didn't have an ego that got in the way of her asking questions. That curiosity keeps her mind going all the time all right. and asking questions and learning new so things. So I have a question and, about yes, your mom. Yes. Does she like to be around young people? She likes to be around all people. Because that's another thing that I learned from a very wise um, great uncle of mine and other great, you know, um, definite elders that they really loved to be around young people and they knew what was going on in pop culture and art and music and literature and you know and they were just with it yeah. and they loved to be around young people and um, somewhere in something I read about you know that is a really good idea yeah too yeah. oh it's absolutely or younger than you know it's all relative right oh yeah <laughs> well, all, all and when you're 30 this. be around 12 year olds I guess and but <laughs> also young people being curious about old people I mean now my mother has Alzheimer's Right. And so her her and, and watching her brain change with the 
with the with the progression of the disease but she'll still say almost every time she sees me she goes how's your son mm. what's he doing mm -hmm. oh how long has he been doing that interesting. and she'll just yeah. she still asks questions and she meets people hi i'm gloria gallagher and what do you do and and she's just still her mind is disappearing but then again, or maybe it's her brain that's disappearing, but her mind is still there. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Right. And just watching how this uh, this openness and this a friend of mine took her to the gay pride parade a few weeks ago in San Diego. And there was my mother in a convertible going by the gay pride parade, waving. Oh, my Have God. Have fun, kids. Have I fun. I love that. And I just it's thought, so oh, my God, oh, next really weekend fun. it'll be Comic-Con. Who well, knows it's where all about, go? Yeah. Well, it's all about, I think, saying yes, because I've been saying around. Yes. That's exactly Being what I around, um, I've been in different, you know, sort of workshops with women, and there's this kind of uh, um, just brilliant, brilliant women, and they would say things like, um, you know, learn how to say no, because there's sort of this idea of, oh, you know, women are always asked to do everything, and we don't know how to say no, and we don't have boundaries and all that. And what would always come up for me to add to the conversation mm -hmm. was, or saying yes, people, because there are many, many opportunities that we might say yes to and we regret. Um, a very wise person said to me one time, we often don't regret what we've done, but we can very often regret what we haven't done. I mean, obviously within reason, but you Correct. know, healthy stuff. But we let those opportunities go by. I'm just dead damn it. Why didn't I just do, you know, why didn't why I just didn't do I that? Yes. Well, there was maybe a little fear that kicked in, a little self-doubt, a little, you know, the voices that yeah, come past in. Past experience or maybe somebody else who it did go well or for Or fear right. of social yes. disapproval that, oh, you know, people think I look ridiculous or, you know, they'll right. say act your yeah. age or, you know, that sort of thing. We're, the we're, limitations we're are endless. We have our if own self-limiting beliefs. That's but right. we're also afraid of what our friends and family will think of us because what they think of us is important to us. Well, this is so fun. I'm glad that you like that other thing that I read. So I'm going to tell you one more thing. Can I really fast and I'm looking at our time. This is Matrix for a Positive Life. This is also from Deepak um, and Allowing the Brain to Thrive. So it's a lot of the stuff that we were just talking about, but I'm just going to bring it here just for a second. Number one, have good friends. Don't isolate yourself and lifelong partners. Number two, engage in worthwhile projects, especially socially. Number three, be close with people who have a good lifestyle. Habits are contagious. There you go. <laughs> contagious. <laughs> but it's so true. Follow a purpose in life. Leave time for prayer, relaxation, and keep a satisfying sexual activity going. People, does not matter how old you are, it's hysterical. I have something to say about that in a minute. Um, add, um, address issues around anger. So kind of deal with that too. Practice, uh, practice stress management. Deal with reactive minds uh, and harmful effects. When we have a negative reaction, stop, stand back, take a few uh, breaths, observe your feelings, and then go from there. But you know, what's one funny thing I just want to say about the sexual thing? There was a study done in um, in we were talking about assisted livings, and you know, I sing in those too. And there's a place in um, in uh, Newport Beach called Leisure World, and the people are like 80, 90, and they have been research. They decided to keep files for like 30 years. I saw this on 60 Minutes. And there were these people who were 80 and 90 years old and they had, as I say, the files for like 30 years on these people. And they a lot they did a lot of things like, okay, is it bad to drink coffee? Is it bad to have sugar? Is it, you know, like all these things that we think or, you know, whatever. Anyway, these people were hilarious because they were so great. They were talking about like, you know, they were 90s. They were in their 90s and uh, a, a number of them were uh, past 100. And they talked wow. about their sex life. They talked about their you know actually they did drink coffee which made me happy they did have a glass of wine a day they you know they asked they were asked about desserts they're like oh we have of, well of course we have desserts I'm like yay okay I'm glad to hear that a little bit you know moderation but it was so great to see these people like holding hands and they're like 97 years old and they're still rocking it so oh, so we're like babies oh, compared to that so we got to keep it going Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Don't mind me. If you don't use it, you lose it. Well, that's right. what somebody told me at one point. I don't know. It's true about everything. Your brain, your body, everything. If you don't use it, it'll atrophy and die. Yes. So we got to use it all. Yes. There you go. Yes. Uh <laughs> Oh. Okay, we, we have five more minutes, and then we got to get out and start doing stuff. Um, exactly. <laughs> we got to hit the road. And we the are doing oh, stuff. Yes, we, we are, are we're so trying. doing stuff. So let's talk more about what we're doing. Right. Well, let's, I want to mention one thing because it's in my head. 
you mentioned before about the yes and the no. Mm -hmm. So I've been interviewing uh, different people for our business book that's coming out next year. And one of the gentlemen I interviewed was Arthur Levitt, the retired chairman of the SEC. Mm -hmm. I interviewed him in New York uh, about a month ago. And he was talking about the yes and no thing. And when he was young and he was working Wall Street and different jobs trying to trying to make something of himself, he when he first set out trying to sell stocks and bonds and, and all that in portfolio, uh, he kept, I don't want to say failing, but he just couldn't get past the nose. Could not get past it. It drove him crazy. So one day he sits down in his manager's office and he says, I, I can't do this. I'm getting all these no's. It's it's killing me. And I have a wife and kids. I, I, I can't do this. Well, his boss said something to him that changed his whole life. He said, what I want you to do for the next month is every day go back to the people that said no. Forget forget a future. For, just, just go back to everybody that said no and try to sell to them again. It will make you the best salesman ever. So he actually went back to all the no's that he could and said, I'm going to try again. And he sat down with these people that looked at him and said, oh, my God, you said I said no to you before. Why are you back in my office? And that confidence building and everything else made him this amazing salesman. He ended up being one of the founders of Shearson Lehman. And then that was sold and the whole thing. So. Well, I love that. It reminds me of, of a quote from Scott McNeely, the founder of Sun Microsystems, Correct. who said, most people make the mistake of thinking no is an answer. It's not an answer. It's a clue. Ah, I like so that. So when someone huh. tells you Very no, good. like if you're trying to sell them, and then say, well, tell me more about that. Like, what would it take to get you to say yes? Or, or what are you looking for? What you know? Exactly. What really rocks your boat? It's a clue. It tells right, you you're right, on the exactly. wrong track. But it, so, but if you stop there and go, oh, that's an answer, and you walk away, in other words, no is your teacher. Yeah, no I is like very that. often a more powerful teacher than yes. Yes tells you okay. Or then I've maybe. Got it. <laughs> but the no, it's like, hmm, tell me more about that. Yes. And I love that that it's not an no is not an answer. It's a clue. I it's true. love that. A lot of yeses could actually be detrimental because what will happen is you'll expect them in the future and you can bury yourself. Mm -hmm. So you really actually... Or they make you soft. Yeah, they make you yes. So you really need those yeah. no's to build that strength. That's and right. And I loved his story. So he went back and tried to resell all those no's and he said it transformed him. Into How that. many did he turn to a yes, do you know? Oh, this is the 1950s. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. I'm, well, I, it's actually interesting because, I mean, yeah. it would be interesting to know what that is because, again, like you're saying, sometimes if you really are chatting with somebody, uh, the thing with sales, and it's even with the power of relationships, is being with people and, and just allowing what they want, you know, what they what the, what is serving them, what is making them feel safe, what is making them feel heard, what is making them feel right. cared about, and that works in all relationships with our kids, with our um, with our engineers, <laughs> <laughs> with our guests. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it just it's it's. Um, I think it's a big big thing. Absolutely, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of our engineer, I want him to let us know how much time we have. I think we have like whoa. Okay, so you guys <laughs> saw that. So I want to wrap this up here because we're going so let's talk let's promote for we have two minutes to do it so let's do it people because we're all good at saying yes to ourselves yes. our projects and our lives and well, our I'm everything gonna tell, I'm going to tell the world that I'm saying yes for them to come Saturday to our live event I like right. it so In world you are coming I'm not asking I'm telling you <laughs> there you go. You want to be there. You do want to be right. there because it's going to be so fun. We did this in Florida a few months ago, and it was just really, really just easy to be there. And so much came to the people, really, honestly. Absolutely. It was a great, great kind of community building uh, place to be in. Thousand very Oaks, much. so nice to go out there. So you guys who live in, you know, Redondo Beach or whatever, it's like peaceful. It's not that far. And but it's, it's a like, Saturday. There's no traffic. And it's a Saturday, yes. And then you after can like – you know, hop over the hill and go to Malibu for drinks. There you go. Or stay for the after party. Yes. Yes. So we have that. We have Contagious Optimism, the book, which we have one now. And then will there be another one? Yes. Our next book will come out around Christmas time. And that's going to be uh, with the new title. We're going back and forth on titles. But basically, Contagious Optimism, Volume 2. Okay, cool. Well, you'll be back for that to like, to you know, do Yes, play with definitely. That. Definitely. Cool, cool. And you guys know you can go on YouTube and find all the Contagious Optimism shows that we've done before, which have been many and awesome. And we're going to talk to BJ, too, because we must say it's never too late to be what you might have been. A guide to, I didn't say this part before, a guide to getting the life you love. Okay, 
Yes. Just say yes. I say yes. yes. Just say yes. Just say yes. Absolutely. So what else do we want to say? And now, uh, uh, John, who turned into Tony, I think we have to roll out. So we're going to go out to a little bit of singing in the rain. But I just want to remind you guys that I'm Sunny Chase. This is David Mezabel. This is David, I mean, uh, BJ Gallagher. <laughs> and we have so much going on in the world. So let's remember that we absolutely make a difference wherever we go. So let's make it Let's make a good difference. Let's, uh, I mean, we make a difference definitely whatever way we do. So let's just choose it to rock because we can. And let's set that reset button and just do a little praying, do a little fun, doing a little rocking, doing a little dancing, and just love yourself and be back next time. Until then, this is Contagious Optimism Radio, and um, we'll see you hopefully in Thousand Oaks in a couple of days. Bye for now. Nice.